What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Enscape video for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about the new features contained in the newest version of Enscape, version 2.8. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so yesterday Enscape released their newest version, version 2.8, and I will link to this page in the notes down below, they have a page that talks about all of the new features contained inside of this version. So they've made several changes that are in here, but I think the one everyone is gonna be most excited about is going to be the animated vegetation function. So let's talk about that one first, and then we can come back and talk about the others. So the animated vegetation, um, basically what they've done is they've added the ability to have animated and moving grass and trees in your videos. And so this is really important because this can really affect the way that your renderings are going to look. It makes them look a lot more lifelike. And so let's take a look at the way that it works. So right here what we have is we have some vegetation items that I've added in SketchUp using Enscape. Right, so I've used the Enscape asset library right here. And so best as I can tell, this change has at least affected all of the trees. Some of the smaller bushes and other things like that don't seem to be affected by this. So you may have to play around with this a little bit to uh, kind of see what's been affected and what isn't. But I know for a fact that some of the trees or um, all of the trees that I've tried animate as well as the grass and the water along with the wind. And so when you add these items and then you look at these inside of Enscape, you can see how now if you look at your trees, your leaves are actually moving around, right? And so if I look at this as I rotate, um, notice that the trees are moving. And if we rotate down and look at our grass, the grass is swaying in the wind as well. Now one thing to be aware of with this is when you're in just the, not the animation or video editor, but when you're just in the regular view, this animates for a second. So as long as you're moving around these animate, if you stop, if you let off of this inside of just preview mode right here, if you let off, you can see how these kind of stop moving when this comes in and does the light calculation. So just in the preview mode, and so this freezes as that's not a live um, model anymore. But notice how these are animating. And so also, if we were to go take a look at our water, so if we were to rotate in on our water and look at this, you can see how our water is being affected by the wind as well. And so one thing you can do inside of uh, SketchUp in the Enscape visual settings window is under atmosphere, you can adjust the intensity of the wind. So notice as I adjust the intensity of the wind up, things move around in the model a lot more. So you can adjust both the wind direction angle, so the direction the wind is coming from, as well as the intensity of the wind inside of your scene. So another thing about this is if you want to override the wind on your pool, so if you don't want your pool to be blowing around the same way that your trees are, you can actually select those inside of the Enscape Material Editor. So you can go to your Enscape Materials, and then in your water settings, you can check the box for override wind settings. And so you can use that to override the way that the water in the pool is moving compared to the way everything else is moving um, driven by the wind in the model. So if you want your water to be driven separate, you can override that in the materials section. And so let's say, for example, that we were to create a video just kind of flying across the face of this building. Um, we could just tap the K key in order to go into the video editor. And then let's say that we wanted to add a keyframe. And so we could set a keyframe right here. And then maybe another keyframe over here, just to kind of preview our animation. We'll go ahead and click apply on this. Now, if we were to preview this animation, you can see how our trees are going to blow in the wind as our animation goes. So you can use this to create animated vegetation inside of your model. So one thing you might have noticed about this though, is a lot of people are using um, the grass material to create carpet as well, right? And since the grass material is now animated, that can be a little bit problematic. That was kind of a workaround. Well now, what they've done is they've changed their material setup so that if you use the word short carpet or long carpet in your material name, so let's say that I was to adjust this carpet material. So if you were to select this carpet and put the word short carpet in here, this is going to calculate your carpet as a separate material from your grass material, meaning the wind isn't going to affect it. You can also put the words long carpet 
in here and you can see how what this is going to do is this is going to calculate this as a longer carpet type in here as well. So you can use this in order to override that so that you can still create carpets without it blowing in the wind. So you can have interior carpets separate from your grass material on the outside. So they've also added some functionality for collaboration inside of your renderings. So now um, inside of the Inkscape viewer, you can tap the C key in order to enter collaboration mode. And what that allows you to do is that allows you to add issues. So for this one, what I could do is I could come in here and I can click on the button for create issue. And so when I do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna set a point inside of my model where it's gonna give you a rendered image of wherever your camera was when you created the issue. And you can type in things like different patio furniture. And then you can add more of a description if you want to, and you can actually create that item and use that collaboratively with a team in order to make and leave notes. So different team members can come in here and leave different notes about different changes that they want um, people to make. So this is making everything a lot more collaborative. You also have the ability within these in order to set them to be done, in progress, new, or removed. And so note that within this annotation, not only can you track this inside of Inkscape, you can live sync to a third party web tool as well. Um, and um, the external users don't need to have CAD or Inkscape in order to use this function. So you can use this in order to collaborate as a team using your renderings inside of Inkscape. And then the last feature I want to talk about just a little bit is they've also added a number of new furniture and healthcare assets. So if we were to go back into SketchUp, you can actually sort by these now, which is pretty nice. Um, you can go in here, you can look at your asset library. And you can, first of all, they have a whole new section in here for hospital props. So those are going to be their healthcare. So they've got things like waiting room furniture and a lot of other healthcare props. So if you're using Inkscape for any kind of healthcare modeling, there's now different carts and other things like that that are contained in here. So if you were to click on new, you can see all of the new models or things that have been tagged as new since the last release. So if you go through this, you can see how there's everything from beds to chairs, um, lots of different stuff in here here. So make sure to go through and take a look at this just by clicking at the new to see what exact or clicking on the new option to see what exactly has been added inside of Inkscape. So to me, I really like this direction that Inkscape is going. So it's giving you a new tool to make your exterior renderings look more realistic when you create videos, as well as taking some steps towards becoming more of a professional tool as well. So I know a lot of architects are using Inkscape to pull out those quick renderings. And the fact that they're adding different models, which can be really helpful helpful for design professionals, I think is a really good move on Inkscape's part as well. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you like these features, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.